Welcome to the world of economics. I'm your teacher, S.K. Agarwal. Although you have already studied some economics in class 11, but economics in class 11 was more of a descriptive nature rather than theoretical nature. So you are going to study economics theory for the first time in class 12. Before we take up any particular theory, I will like to draw your attention to the scope of economics. By scope of economics, I mean how are the various topics listed in microeconomics of class 12 are related to each other. Basically, a study of economics is simply the analysis of the choice making behavior. What is choice making behavior? You have two options, three options, four options. You cannot adopt all the options at the same time. You have to make a choice. What is the best option before you? Why does this problem arise? We will study a little later, but it's basically choice making behavior, which you study in almost every topic of economics. Now, broadly, economics is divided into two parts, microeconomics and macroeconomics. Microeconomics is the study of an individual unit. Macroeconomics is the study of nation as a whole, country, or the country as a whole. Let me complete it. When we talk of country, although you, you, you have studied the meaning of micro and macro in class 10, but there it simply means small and large. In economics, it has a specific meaning. If we talk about the country as a whole, then it is macroeconomics. But if we talk about any individual unit, now that unit may be a consumer, that unit may be a producer, a firm and industry. So when we talk about this, actually we are studying mac, uh, microeconomics. But when we are talking of things like national income, unemployment problem in the country, inflation in the country, aggregate demand of the country, then actually we are talking of macroeconomics. So basically, your entire economics is divided into two categories, microeconomics and macroeconomics. Although they are distinct studies, yet they are related. Relationship. National income is the total income of the country as a whole of the, let us say, if we talk about India, 120 crore people, their income is national income, but exactly national income means you will study when you come to this topic of national income. If you talk of income by an individual, how much an individual earns and all that, then you are talking of microeconomics. So basically you see the sum total of microeconomics behavior is the sum total of 
macroeconomic behavior of the country. So broadly, remember, our economics is divided into microeconomics and macroeconomics. And remember, it is a part of your syllabus also, the distinction between microeconomics and macroeconomics. So we have seen that there are two divisions, broad divisions of economics, microeconomics and macroeconomics. Your syllabus is also dividedly, is also divided accordingly. 50 marks worth of microeconomics and 50 marks worth of microeconomics. Now, before we start a particular topic, once again, let us now see the scope of microeconomics as such. In microeconomics, basically, we study equilibrium. Now, this equilibrium may relate to anything. Now, before we, but in, in our class 12 syllabus, basically our concentration is on market equilibrium. Equilibrium can be of anything. Now, first thing, what is equilibrium? This is the term which is frequently used in day-to-day -day talks. I think a person of any uh, discipline uses this term. Doctors use it, engineers use it. Technicians use it. Actually, equilibrium means a balanced situation. If we talk in terms of the common man's language, it is the best situation. So what is best for a consumer? What is best for a consumer is that who is a consumer? A consumer is one who spends his income on the basis of prices and products available in the market. And he tries to maximize the satisfaction by these purchases. Then it is consumer's equilibrium. If we talk of a producer, he or she tries to maximize profits by undertaking a production activity. So the main concentration, main focus of microeconomics in your syllabus is basically on market equilibrium. Now, market equilibrium, what does it mean? The meaning will be clear as we go on further. Market equilibrium is determined by two forces. In fact, any equilibrium is determined by two forces, demand and supply. For example, market for a good is an equilibrium. When the demand for that good equals supply of that good. So there are two forces, demand and supply. Let us proceed further. What do we study in demand? The question is, who demands? The answer is, consumer demands. Yeah, one who demands goods and services, we call it, we, uh, we call him a consumer. Naturally, we will study about a consumer first. What is consumer's behavior? A consumer behavior has two aspects. One, we have already mentioned, Consumer will like to maximize satisfaction from the purchases of goods and services in the market. So 
one aspect of consumer's behavior is maximization of utility. In the technical language of economics, we call this situation where consumer maximizes satisfaction as consumer's equilibrium. Now remember, in your syllabus, this is one topic about consumer. Consumer's equilibrium. What are the conditions of consumer's equilibrium? How does consumer attain satisfaction? What are its limitations and all that? The second aspect, we have just said, consumer goes to the market to make purchases. Now remember, you are a consumer. Suppose you go to the market, you want to buy something and you have a price in your mind. What is that price? This commodity should be available to me, let us say at rupees 100. It should be available. Not that I want to pay 100, it should be available and you are, you are ready to spend 100. When you go to the market, 